what's up guys i'm back with another video today we're gonna be reacting to some cj the champ anime deadliest killers serial killers yeah light light is definitely definitely up there bro Let's i'm it. going to jail all righty ladies and gentlemen it is time for another installment of anime's deadliest serial killers and today we dive into the case of the most notorious serial killer in anime history and that is none other than kira aka light yagami and my god with all the evidence in the amount of victims this man racked up this case is gonna be a beefy one so let's stop wasting time so without further ado it's time to dive in to the kira case Light Yagami, one of the most diabolical niggas to ever exist. A man with a kill count that ranges in the six figures and had a whole cult praising this nigga, thinking that he's the Messiah. I need somebody to help me glorify God and stretch out your arms, open up your mouth. Yeah, they people were praising him hard, bro. <laughs> I never forget, man. They were praising him hard. And say anyway. But you have to wonder how the actual f did this generic ass background character looking toothpick built ass nigga become one of the most notorious mass murderers in fiction? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is why we are here. So first off, we need to know what the hell the weapon was to commit all these homicides. And that, of course, is the Death Note. Now, I'm pretty sure everybody knows how this thing works. But if you forgot, here's a quick refresher. The human whose name is written in this note shall die. The note will not take effect unless the writer has the person's face in their mind when writing his or her name. Therefore, people sharing the same name will not be affected. If the cause of death is written within 40 seconds of writing the person's name, it will happen. And finally, after writing the cause of death, details of the death should be written in the next 6 minutes and 40 seconds. Now with all that explained, we can now move into the first major incident, and that is of course, the first confirmed 52 victims. Now when Light first found the death note, when it conveniently dropped right in front of him, he thought to himself, man this is some bullshit. What is this, a sick joke? Who the hell would believe this? But Light being a little curious George, decided to take the book. So later on when Light got home, Bro was a little bored. So he ended up thinking in his head, hmm, I mean, it doesn't hurt to try it out, right? So Light's intrusive thoughts took over. So he ended up turning on the news and hearing, breaking news, a local crackhead is holding eight children hostage at a daycare. So Light said, F it, let's write this guy's name down. I mean, he's a criminal after all. So 40 seconds later, the news comes back on and says, breaking news, the children have been set free and the assailant just f***ed over and died. <laughs> but this man Light was shook. He was like, no, 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 no. It, it was just coincidence, right? <laughs> No, no fucking way, right? But it was no coincidence. This that local no crackhead was the first victim of Light. But Light needed more proof because he thought it just had to be a random coincidence that bro had a heart attack when he wrote his name down. So later <laughs> on that same night, while Light is walking back from cram school, he ends up seeing this lady walking and these bikers come up and start to harass her. So ugly biker bastard right here ends up saying, Hey there, pretty lady. <laughs> How about you come fuck with a real nigga and come in hot? Who uh, spit on that thing for me? <laughs> so these freaky ass niggas tried to redo a healer shorty oh, in the nah. parking lot. But Light was in the convenience store watching the whole thing like, not on my watch, you 69 gods. So he wrote bro's name down and made the cause be of accidental death. And the rest was history. Old girl breaks away while ugly bastard tries to track her down. Watch your camera, watch your camera. To another world. Trust Trust couldn't got him. And just like that, Light caught another body. And this man was stunned. He was like, no, 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 no fucking way. <laughs> I, I, I just summoned the truck home. That means I must be a fucking god. And at this point, Light's god complex was born. This man went back to the crib, locked the door looking like he about to beat that thing, and said, I'm about to cleanse this world of its garbage. So this man looked up a list of criminals and just started. Yo, that's the moment he went crazy, bro. Nigga just start waiting, going like, <laughs> dropping everyone name down, bro. Everyone was dropping like flies, bro. 
started getting active. This nigga started writing so fast, it looked like he had an essay due the next day. And he just started racking up bodies. Body, body, body. Going crazy thinking in his head. Yeah, that ugly bastard that was talking to that little girl the other day. Enjoy being unemployed with Dr. Disrespect. <laughs> And this man went through the whole night just writing down names until two whole pages were full. Damn. And look at this man breathing hard as hell, looking like he just ran a 5K. And just off of that one night, this man killed 52 criminals. Now, here's the wild part. That was just criminals that died of heart attacks. Because when Interpol got this information, they was like, there could be some people that were unaccounted for. So that death toll could have easily been over 100. So after Light racked up all of his first victims, the name Kira started spreading like wildfire because Light was constantly oh, dropping off yeah. niggas. Every single day, he was killing multiple criminals and people all around the world was supporting this man. They had Reddit threads and Discord Yeah, they were praising him hard, and glazing. up his God complex even more. Bro, just looking at this Light. Yeah, that's right. Glaze me, nigga. Polish this Willie. And of course, now he got this A1 instigating Shinigami Ryuk attached to his hip the whole time now. But even though Light was killing only criminals, at the end of the day, it was still murder. And this is when this man fell for the trap. Now, this is the moment where you just think to yourself, what if Light never made this crucial mistake? And that mistake was killing Linda L. Taylor on live TV. So a worldwide public service announcement comes on TV and this man announces himself as L. But obviously this ain't L. But Light didn't know. So Lind L. Taylor starts speaking and saying, Good afternoon, world. My name is Lind L. Taylor. Kira, if you're watching this, we have a message for you. You are evil and you are just a mindless serial killer. And I'm going to bring your punk ass to justice. So while Light is watching this, here come this instigating ass nigga. Ooh, Light. I'm not going to lie, that nigga pressing your shit right now. So what the fuck you going to do about it, huh? So here come this man Light. His ego is challenged. You think I'm fucking evil quit all that fucking yapping nigga i am god and you can suck my divine dick six feet under so light got to work quick he wrote yeah. bro's name down in a heartbeat and after he finished he was like yeah that's right bro he so used one whole ass page to do so, it 40 seconds later and lind l taylor has a heart attack croaks over and dies and here go Light thinking he got it in the bag. What's wrong, huh? Get the fuck up, huh? But see, you was talking to that shit! What's good, fuck, nigga? Huh? Wow, ha, <laughs> Kira, I can't believe it. You was one dumbass <laughs> nigga. You really think I'd get my introverted ass on TV and f***ing press you like this? You one stupid ass nigga, and now I know all your shit. The dude you just killed? Yeah, he was due for execution today anyway, so he could go f*** off. Also, this is not a worldwide broadcast. We only broadcasting this in the Kanto region of Japan. So guess what, motherfucker? I know exactly where you at. So come on, motherfucker. Go on ahead and try to kill me. Do it. Come on. I'm waiting for you right here. Don't be a pussy bitch. Show me you got some balls on you. Or is it that you need a name and a face? Fuck. 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 <laughs> he got your ass. Could it be me, though? <laughs> Kira notice, oh my mama, I'm coming for your bitch ass, and I'm gonna put your f nigga ass in the slammer. So after this man L played light like a fool and pressed the living hell out of him, the investigation on Kira went into full effect. So this is where we move on to our next set of evidence and next set of victims. And our first key victim is Ray Pinber. Now, Ray Pinber was a FBI agent. Yeah, this case got so big that this man L ended up getting help from the FBI to come solve this case because that's how horrendous this shit got. Cause Light uh -huh. was murdering like 23 niggas a day at this point. He was dropping at least one body an hour and just toying with L the whole time. So L suspected that whoever Kira was had to have ties to the police because how the hell would this person be getting all this information on these criminals? And what do you know? Light's dad is the police chief. So L basically made every single person that had ties to the police be kept under surveillance by but hold on though in criminals are on like online that you could look up look the criminals up like just go on google and type in that person and what he did and all the criminals database popped up i'm just saying maybe back then they couldn't do it but now you could because if i got the debt note i'm trying to look up these criminals i'll just go online <laughs> 
by the FBI. And Ray Pember's job was to survey light. And obviously light didn't need this type of heat. So light decided, I'm gonna have to put this man in a coffin. So light came up with this devious ass plan. And that was the bus jacking incident. So for this, light needed a guinea pig. So he found another local crackhead on the most wanted list, Kichiro Otsuruda. I'm not gonna lie, I just butchered that man's name. So the second part of his plan, he needed a shorty. So this man dialed up one of his shorties on his roster and called her and said, Hello? I'm over here stroking my dick. I got hugs <laughs> on my dick, but I'm just stroking my shit. I'm horny as fuck, man. I'm a freak, man. Life a freak. Who's a freaky ass nigga? So the next day, Light ends up meeting the girl to go on their date to Disneyland. She just doesn't know she's a guinea pig. And of course, Ray Pember is right behind them, following them, all according to Light's plan. So they end up getting on the bus. And Hold Ray on, how many minutes? 37, 37, 19. Damn, this is a long ass video, but hey, we are enjoying ourselves. Pember sits right behind them. So about a good 15 minutes later, they stop at the next bus stop and the local crackhead gets on the bus. And this man wasted no time. He cocked back the gun and said, Hey, right, everybody, sit the fuck down and do your best Rosa Parks impersonation. I'm gonna blow this nigga brains out. Oh, oh, sir, no. please. I ain't playing with you, nigga. So this man called up Disneyland and said, Bring out all the cash you made today and make sure the nigga that's bringing out got on a Minnie Mouse costume. Sir, we're able to comply with your demands but why the Minnie Mouse costume so I could get my nut off nigga the fuck else you expect so while this lunatic is high out of his mind and going wild this man Ray Pimber leans over and says all right y'all like he said stay calm and do your best Rosa Parks impersonation my name is Ray Pimber FBI so when this man light looked at this man's ID bro just smirked and thought in his head <laughs> stupid ass nigga showtime oh, according to plan so but why would you even give him your ID, bro? Paper on the floor. So the crackhead's like, the fuck you moving for, you little shit? Do you, do you want me to blow your brains out, nigga? But Light meant to drop that paper because that was... Because anyone who touches that paper gets to see the Shin Megami. <laughs> bro, I used to watch that you know, way back in high school, and I still remember some of the part that happened a piece of the death note so old boy turns around and starts tweaking because he ends up seeing ryuk behind him so bro just starts emptying the map trying to shoot this man ryuk but obviously it ain't working so bro ran up to the bus driver and said hello get me off this bus so the bus driver stops bro runs out into the street and cartoon comes flying down the street and splatters this nigga's guts like the nickelodeon logo and of course, of course, Light is sitting on this bus with no emotion, looks at his watch and the said, 1145 on the dot, right on schedule. Light staged this entire bus jacking because using the death note, he made this man board the bus, attempt to hijack it, then jump out and get hit by a car due to accidental so death. And then at the end of this, Ray Pember thinks nothing suspicious of this man because he thought, huh, I mean, it couldn't be Kara because he would have just offed him when he got on the bus. So now this man does not suspect Light and Light has his name. So after Light boomed the second local crackhead, it was time to move into phase three of his plan. So about a week later at a subway station, he ends up seeing Ray Pember walking. So Light puts on his hood looking like he about to hit a lick. So he gets behind him and says, Ray Pember, don't move a fucking muscle or I'll drop your ass right here. So Light tells this man that he's Kira. And to prove it, he said, look over there. You see that nigga with them glasses on? I'm gonna drop that nigga right now. And bro right here starts having a heart attack and dies. God damn. Bro straight up off this man in the public eye. And then Light told him, don't worry, you shouldn't feel bad for him. He was a registered sex offender and a PDF file. Caught him talking to three little boys the other day. So Light gives him an earpiece and tells him to board a train. So later on when he boards the train, Light tells him to open the envelope. And he sees all these papers. So Light says in his ear, I want you to write your boss's name in every single FBI agent that came here in Japan. Do it, I'ma drop your ass and your bitch right the fuck now. So Ray Pember writes down all the names. So after this, Light told him, wait 30 minutes and then get off the train. So 30 minutes pass. Ray Pember gets off the train and it happens. <laughs> 
and right before the lights went out this man looked up look at this evil face Kira was the whole time and thought <laughs> before he died you got to be fucking kidding me so after the lights went out for Ray Pember, so did the rest of the FBI's. Cause the sheet that Ray Pember wrote those names on were death note sheets. So the other 11 agents that were in Japan and his boss shortly died right after Ray. And just like that light Yagami did the unthinkable. This man bitched the FBI because the director of the FBI calls L and tells him, Mr. L, um, I'm sorry, but America's gonna have to pull out of this one. This shit's getting out of hand. Mm-hmm. America said, fuck this. We ain't doing this type of shit, bro. Y'all on your own, bro. Get something from other country, bro. Now, it seems that Light is ready to make his victory lap. But there was one problem. There was a loose end. And that loose end was Ray Pember's fiance, a former FBI agent. So she did some snooping around and quickly figured out whoever Kira was had to be on that bus. Also, she ended up figuring out that he can kill in other ways besides a heart attack. So a couple days later, she goes to the police station because she's basically figured out this entire thing. All she needs to know was who was on the bus. So when she goes to the police station and asks to speak bus. to Light's <laughs> dad, who was over the case, just by coincidence, Light walks in and overhears her talking about it. So Light was like, who the hell is this bitch? So he walks up to her and tells her, hi, excuse me, ma'am. My name's Light. Pleasure to meet you. You see, my dad is the chief of the police force, so I can help you out real quick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So they end up walking outside and they start chatting it up. So the first thing Light asks is, Um, Miss Beautiful Miss, um, can I have your name? So she says, Um, yeah, um, my name's Shoko Maki. So Light already has the name. So now his plan was to just talk her up, Demon figure time. out what she knows, and if she knew too much, he was gonna offer. So they kept on talking and she just kept on yapping, but everything she said was right. And the real stinger was, she said that, Um, yeah, um, so my fiance said that he showed somebody his ID and he wasn't supposed to so whoever he showed his id to yeah um that's most definitely kara so light was like shit she knows way too much she got to die now because if they pull up them bus cameras lights cooked so here oh, goes this shit. sinister ass nigga so bro starts asking her questions but in reality he's writing down her name so like <laughs> but a couple of more seconds pass and she's still alive Nani? so light ends up figuring out because i realize she gave him a fake name. She don't trust him. She feel it was him. But I think um, the Shimigami said the only way you could get her name if he um, something about give up his life or so so he could get some get his eyes to see people's name. Because Ryuk's ass was laughing at him the whole time that she used the alias. So that was not her real name. So Light is starting oh, to panic. It is do or die right now. Because if she gets back to the police station, he's done. So he pulled this last trick out of his ass and told her, Well, you see, ma'am, um, it's going to be actually impossible for you to go back to the police station. Because they're very busy right now. But it's okay, though. Because I'm on the Kira task force. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah, I have connections to L2. So this Pinocchio long nose lying ass nigga basically baited her and told her you know what man you are really smart you should join the task force with us all you gotta do is show me your id so i can check your credentials so obviously she jumped at the idea because she wants to bring her fiance's killer to justice so she whips out her id and it's over light saw her real name wrote it down it made the cause be dumbass but bro she was bro ain't she smart enough to know like bro He's not on the team, bro. Don't you think he looks a little too young to be an investigator too? Huh? Bro, she she wasn't thinking, bro. She wasn't thinking. Be of unaliving herself. So right before tragedy was about to strike, she asked this man, "Um, why do you keep on looking at your watch?" "Oh, because I'm Kira." Duh, stupid bitch. <laughs> 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 I forgot that face, bro. <laughs> you know you fucked up. There we go. Because I'm Kira. Duh, stupid bitch. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, shit, bro. Oh, shit.
<laughs> oh shit. Yup. Yup, that's me. If you, you wonder, oh, I got here. <laughs> shit, bruh. Bruh, that's a look of you know you fucked up. <laughs> shit. Oh, uh. And it was over. She oh ended up with God. Kira. Duh, stupid bitch. <laughs> And it was over. <laughs> she ended up walking away and she's going to underlive herself in GTA. And while she's walking away, this sick nigga is just talking and saying, Oh ma'am, um, what's wrong? D you still need to use my phone, right? I thought we were going to catch Kira. And what makes this even more tragic, they never found her body. We don't know what the hell happened to her. All we know is that she unalived herself. And with that, the bus jacking incident comes to a close. Damn. Alrighty, chop chop, move it on. We got more people dying. Flip the board for our next set of evidence. Now, obviously, we know Light's biggest opposition is L. One of the smartest characters in fiction. This nigga's anime Sherlock Holmes. And this man was on Light's ass 24-7. Because he always had a hunch that Light was Kira. I mean, he literally walked up to Bro and said, Hey man, uh, my name's L. And I think there's a 5% chance that you're Kira. What? I, I'm not sure all the way, but there's like a five percent chance, bro. He had this man join the Kira task force to keep an eye on him more. He even had cameras set up in his room, watching him 24/7. So you know damn well that he was watching him yanking his shit. And don't be acting like I'm reaching. You think oh, Light was yeah, cracking me? So fuck well, no, he ain't watch. this bitch. Speaking of that, let me go ahead and introduce the accomplice, the second Kira, Misa. Absolute brain dead. This girl suffers from brain dead. And she's just deeply in love with this nigga. And the reason why is because her parents were murdered. And lo and behold, guess who brought justice to the murderer? Yeah, Kira off that nigga. And how she got a death note is even crazier. One night she was walking home and she got approached by some crazy ass stalker nigga. And he was ready to kill her. So a shinny gami named Jealous that was weirdly in love with her decided to save her life and kill the stalker at the cost of his life. So Rim decided, uh, I might as well give her the death note. He would have wanted it this way. And Tada, Miss Brain Rot became the second hero. So Light decided to use her. Bro, but she wasn't on demon time like Light, bro. She just, I think she only gonna use it like if someone is stalking her or someone piss her off. She write it name on. That's the only reason I would see. Because she had the Shinigami eyes and she could see any person's name just by looking at them. But at the cost of a half in your lifespan though. But Light knew he needed her to dep in his bag so he could kill people 10 times easier. So he made her pose as his girlfriend. So time passes and one day L ends up capturing Misa, suspecting her of being the second Kira because they raided her apartment and just found a bunch of shit. So she got put in confinement. So Light said, F it, it's time to activate my master plan. So to make sure Misa did not confess, he had Rim make her relinquish ownership of the death note so it would wipe all of her memories of it. Then had Rim and Ryuk swap notebooks. And in the notebook, he wrote down two BS rules that basically said, if the person that is using the notebook hasn't wrote down a name in 13 days, they die. And if you destroy the notebook, all the humans that have used it will die. So he told Rim, go give this notebook to a greedy, power hungry bastard and let them become Kira. While I give myself up to L, relinquish ownership of the death note and go into solitary confinement for a total of 50 days and that's what light did because on day seven of his confinement light gave up his ownership of the death note and lost all of his memories of it to take all suspicion off of him and on day 15 the murder started back up again and the person murdering these people was mr kiyosuke higuchi of the yotsuba group so him and this group decided to kill other businessmen to further the growth of their company. These niggas was Disney just building a bigger monopoly, but they oh, downfall God. was they had some rats. And that was these two right here because they basically sold out and was talking to L the whole time. So over time after Light and Misa was released from confinement and L and Light, the two smartest niggas on the earth working on the case simultaneously ended up figuring out that it was Higuchi. So one night they end up baiting him out with a fake broadcast 
podcast saying that they're about to reveal who Kira is. So later on, while this man is speeding down the road, he ends up getting stopped by a cop. So the cop do his thing. He like, license and registration, please. So Higuchi's like, all right, all right, all right. But this man was not reaching for the license. He was reaching for the death note. And he made the Shinigami ideal so he could see the officer's name. So he wrote bro's name down, but then just hit the gas and took off. So this man starts a whole high speed chase running from this cop. And about five seconds later, the cop ends up having a heart attack and crashes into the back of a truck. Another Damn. victim by truck. That's Damn, this up, nigga's bro. on a tear. So that man L said, all units, arrest this nigga. And I kid you not, this shit went from death note to Tokyo Drift. So this man had the whole task force chasing him, L Light and Watery in the chopper, and they was not playing games. They said this shit is tonight. So while this man Higuchi is speeding on the road, this man runs into a police blockade. So he ends up getting cornered and he is trapped. So he tries to drive the other way, but FaZe Watery is up here on the helicopter and says, not on my watch, fuck boy. And shoots his tire out, makes him spin out, and he crashes into the wall. And it was over for Higuchi. They surrounded that man. So they cuff him, pin him down, and they start interrogating him. Now here is where this master manipulator plan comes full circle. So while they're interrogating him, Higuchi tells him that there is a notebook that allows him to do all of his killings. So Light Dad goes in and searches the car and he finds the death note. So when he touches it and starts looking through it, he ends up seeing the room and freaks the fuck out. So then the other detective comes over and he says, Chief, are you all right? The fuck you screaming for? Oh shit! So that man, L says, bring the notebook over to the helicopter. So L gets the notebook and just starts staring into nothingness, just going into a deep thought. But he ended up realizing there has to be more than one notebook because there were two Kiras. And while that was happening, Light was like, let me see it. And Light grabbed the notebook and started tweaking. Bro, like he entered the avatar state. Every single memory came back into this man's head. So L was like, uh, bro, are you good? And Light was like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm perfectly fine. It swaps over to his face and it's over. This nigga just thinking, yes, back yes, to normal. I've won. <laughs> All according to plan. So this man pulls out a piece. Bro, I, I always fuck with light, bro. He's the best, bro. Himself and makes him bleed and writes down Higuchi's name with his blood. And 40 seconds later, while they're taking him back to the car to arrest him, Higuchi has a heart attack, falls to his knees, and dies. And look at this man's face, bro. It is all over. It was just about to get worse from here. So they get back to headquarters and they start looking over the death note and they find those fake bogus rules that Light made. And that fake 13 days rule basically cleared him and Misa's name. So they were off the hook. So this is when Light's mass manipulation went overboard. He made Misa go find the other death note, gain all of her memories back, then left a note saying, yeah, you remember that guy L? Find his real name and kill him. So she makes the shit Shinigami ideal again, cutting her lifespan in half again. And he Damn. makes her start killing people again. And this is where Rim ended up realizing what Light's full plan was. And that was to get suspicion back on Misa so that Rim would have to intervene and kill L to protect Misa because Rim deeply cared about Misa. So it was pretty much wraps from here. The power goes out and she didn't already kill Watery. This old man fighting for his life. So he ends up deleting all the data. And then a few seconds later, it happens. L has a heart attack falls over and before he dies the last thing that he sees is this evil dick-headed ass smirk just to rub it in at the last second <laughs> and the lights went out l was dead now here comes the attitude swap up look at this fucker he's like oh no it was the shinigami guys <laughs> You know, y'all, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I really I hate do hate this nigga. Talk, but I have to admit, game is game. This man is the best mass game manipulator. Is game, right bro. This, this master, nigga is so smart, bro. He ends up finding Rim's pile of ashes because she died because she was saving Misa and, like, just casually takes his death note back. 
So after this, Light was about to go on another mass murder requiem. This man stands at the top of the building, pulls out his pen, and just started going on a rampage. These two people that were on the task force that were basically convicts, yeah, it was rats for them. Bootleg Nina Williams, she's out here riding her motorcycle. She has a heart attack, crashes the motorcycle, and dies. And this next one was tragic. This dude right here, Iber, his wife and kid walks in the room, and the kid's like, Daddy! Just to see his dad's corpse fall on the ground. Oh, man, and y'all remember the Yotsuba group? They thought they were scot-free. Rinji gets up <laughs> and tells Suguru that we did it, man. This is a new start for Yotsuba. Yeah, man, our stock is about to roar. Just for this man to fall over, <laughs> up blood, an old boy right oh, here knew shit. he was cooked. He has a heart attack, and every single member of the Yotsuba group died. But Light didn't stop there. Now, I have a theory because they didn't confirm this, but I honest to God think that this is true. While he's on this killing montage, no. it shows all the past news reporters that have reported on this man. Now, you see this woman right here. Peep this. On this board where it shows a bunch of criminals being wiped out, she is on the bottom right. And her picture goes out. So that tells me this nigga killed all of the news reporters that said some shit about him. I'm sick. I'm actually fucking sick. Nigga said fuck. Bro, me. I wouldn't even go on TV, like bro. TMZ. I'm, I'm, this, I'm just quitting. Got Over the next five years, Light's killings increased tenfold because there was nobody that could stop him. So this is the time where this man had to have dropped off at least a hundred thousand plus. Nigga, America claimed him as law, judge, jury, and executioner because they couldn't do nothing. Look at George Bush old ass. You know he ain't do shit. But I can't blame the old nigga because Light's reign of terror just got worse and worse and worse. I mean, the nigga can control truck coon on command. And the most chilling thing this man ever did was go to L's grave and just start derangingly laughing his ass off. Look at this nigga. He has his ass up. He's twerking <laughs> in the grave and spitting on his shit. I mean, look at that thing. That shit is moving. This nigga Light said, fuck, eat my testicles, nigga. And with Light's victory, we now move into our final set of evidence. Now, at this point in time, Light has taken the mantle of L. Yes, Light just didn't kill L. He took his whole flow, his whole name. And L's successors, Mir and Mello, are now on his ass. So Mello and the Mafia decided to kidnap the director of the MPA so they could trade him for the Death Note. So guess what Light did? Ding, 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 you probably guessed it. Light kills the director of the MPA so the Mafia will lose their leverage. But guess what? That's just the start of this last little list that I have. So you want to hear some more terrible shit? I got you. So since Light killed the director of the MPA, Mello and the Mafia decided, let's kidnap this man's sister so they could get more leverage. So after this whole trade went down and they got back his sister, she was so traumatized by this experience. Her mind was broken. She was so fucked up, she couldn't even talk. Had her in a wheelchair and everything at Arkham Asylum. Damn. And his sister was sadly a victim of his actions. But guess who also was a victim of his actions? His daddy. Yeah. This man used his dad as a pawn. So to get back that death note, Light decided to relinquish his and made Misa send a message that said, Kira will be relinquishing his death note to somebody in the task force. And guess who took ownership of that death note and made the Shinigami ideal? His daddy. So later on, they end up raiding Mello's hideout. And at the end of the raid, Light tells his dad to confront Mello. So while Light's dad is confronting Mello, Light's dad was hesitant about writing his name down and killing him. So one of the dudes that was left alive shoots his dad in the back and Mello blows up his hideout. So after this, they are in the hospital and Light's dad is about to die. So you know what this sick, pathetic bastard does? He says, Dad, please, before you go, you've got to write his name down. Is this nigga serious? Come on, old motherfucker, help me out here, damn it. Do something useful for your son before you fucking die. Oh my God. Get him the fuck out of here. Get him the, please. Black, get him the fuck. 
out of here. Like, I can't begin to tell you how pathetic this shit was. Yo dad is about to die because of your actions, by the way. And you begging this nigga to get somebody's name for your personal gain. Sick bastard. And this wasn't even the worst part. Since his dad had the Shinigami eyes, he looked at Light and said, Oh, sonny boy, I'm glad to see that you not Kira because I could see your lifespan. I could die at peace. This man's dad died not knowing that his son was Kira because he relinquished that death note. Because the thing was that if you were a user of the death note, a person with Shinigami eyes could not see your lifespan. So his dad died living a lie. Sickening shit. And his blood is on Light's hands. So this man joins Doflamingo in the Patricide Club. Now we have come down to our last major victim. And this one was just peak manipulation. So while Kira's influence was growing stronger in the world and Light was out here inciting riots to stop Nier, he needed the right people to spread his message. So the ex Kira, Teru Mikami, who was basically Light's right hand man that he personally chose after making Misa relinquish her death note again and losing all of her memories decided we need a change of management so this fat nigga demigawa who is the leader of kira's kingdom and is the spokesperson for this cult decided to stream their sunday service on tv tell me how you feel now yes you lord so mikami said fuck these niggas so he deletes every single one of these on live tv delete then he saved Demi Gall's fat ass for last. He said, the doors of the church are open, but not for you. So after Mikami disbanded the church of Kira, he chose a loyal supporter of Kira to be the next spokesperson. And that was Kiyomi Takada, Light's ex-girlfriend back in college. So you see where this is probably going to go, right? <laughs> so Light convinced the task force that we should use Shorty to get some more leverage on Kira and find out who that is. But obviously, Light had ulterior motives with her. So one night, he meets up with her. So here go this manipulation, Riz. How you doing? Shorty, you looking as fine as ever. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And he just had her in the palm of his hand. So he basically told her, look, Shorty, I'm Kira. And I see that my dog has chosen you as my spokesperson. So I'm going to make you the goddess of the new world. And she was so ecstatic. She was entrenched in this nigga. And yeah, y'all could probably guess what happened after this. Now they don't show it, but let's be real. Light like the pipe on her ass. How good is that shit? How good is that shit? How <laughs> so after Light got done getting his freak on and getting Takata to work with him, he had Shorty basically being another Kira. So he made Mikami make a fake notebook and sent the actual names to Takata, bringing her in and making her do some damn killing. And she was just dignitized. She had that Jeffrey Dahmer syndrome when Shorty's was just fiending over that nigga for some odd reason. But time for shit to get crazy. So one day, Takata ends up getting ran up on and kidnapped by Melo. So a couple hours passed and Melo started trying to interrogate her. Bro pulled out the gun and said, all right, chop, chop. Take off them clothes and start shaking them booty cheeks. I'm gonna blow your fucking brains out, bitch. So while she starts stripping, she ends up taking a piece of the death note out that she had on her bra. So while Melo's transporting her in the back of this truck, she ends up calling light and she on the phone saying, oh my God. shake my booty cheeks so light said baby calm down now did you do what i told you to do if you ever got in a situation like this yeah and that is what she did because she wrote Melo's name down and killed that nigga but light being a sick and twisted bastard decided nah i'm gonna get as much out of you as i can until your gas tank is empty bitch so light told her on the phone the time has come execute so he made her call up Mikami and made her tell him, send me as many criminals as you can so I can go on a killing spree. So while she was doing that, Light was just sitting in the car on the way to go pick her up. And in his head, he just said, man, you know what? You should have never went to that frat party without me, bitch. And it was all over for Shorty. Light made her unalive herself by burning herself alive and setting everything on fire to get rid of every single piece of evidence. 
And just like that, that was like that is a true villain, bro. Because the next day on January 28th, this nigga got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the final confrontation with Nier, Light got cooked. This nigga went out so sad, bro. Nier read this motherfucker like a book. It was actually fucking hilarious seeing this nigga lose his mind because Mikami utterly failed. So Light tried to pull a fast one, but Matsuda just dumped bullets in his ass. So for Light to escape, Mikami just unlocked himself. Nigga committed seppuku and Light just ran away, but they didn't even bother chasing him. He was done. So Ryuk watching over the whole thing was just like, well, I'll give it to you like you was one entertaining motherfucker but i need my notebook back and on january 28th 2010 anime's most deadliest serial killer dies of a heart attack you know for a fact this nigga is not bro you he should not have heaven on his mind anyway you know where you going bro it's straight to hell no matter what you did bro you you shouldn't be killing bro it says it in the bible bro but still, bro, you going straight to hell, bro. <laughs> Man, how everything comes full fucking circle, doesn't it, buddy? All right, everybody, it's time for our final tally. Now, obviously, keeping kill count in this is literally impossible because there were mad off-screen deaths. And he just wasn't killing criminals. He was killing innocent people, too. And also yeah. people with just petty crimes. He probably killed your ass if you got a speeding ticket. Because this motherfucker was just evil. I mean, you know how many <laughs> families he probably tore apart doing this shit? A lot! Shit, what like it was one prayer for these families, man. But here's what we'll do. If one of y'all can get an actual reasonable number and people actually agree with you, I'll pin the comment and we'll make that our number. But well, you know what that number gonna be right now? Drum roll, please. At least a minute. A lot. A lot. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I ain't lying. Anyways, man, case closed. And that is another installment of Anime's Deadliest Serial Killers. So hope y'all enjoyed and uh, get ready, baby. Because our next trial is going to be the beefiest one we've ever had. That yes, looks I'm like Shredder. Do a warning right now. So until then, I'm out this, huh? Yeah. Me too.